In this video, I want to take a look at adding and subtracting radical expressions. Adding and subtracting radical expressions is very similar to combining like terms, which you may be more familiar with. If we had something like this, for example, where we have 6x plus 2x, well, we know that we would combine that to be 8x. Well, it's very similar in working with radical expressions. We need to have the same square root, and if we do, then we can combine those things. So let's take a look at the first one right here. Very similar to what I just did there. We have 2 times the square root of 5 plus 6 times the square root of 5. Well, we have the same radical, the square root of 5, in each of them. So what I can do is combine them. It's very similar to 2x plus 6x. If I did that, I would get 8 times the square root of 5. Okay? Now, let's take a look over here. We have the square root of b plus 6 times the square root of 2b minus 5 times the square root of b. Now, the radical has to be exactly the same, the radicand the thing that's in the square root here. So what can I combine in this one? Well, I can combine this because I've got the square root of b and then I've got the square root of b here. But I'm not able to combine this in because it's different. It's not the same. It has to be exactly the same in order to combine it. In the same way, we couldn't combine if this was 6x squared plus 2x. Well, we can't combine that because they're not like terms. So, let's see, we've got, this is really 1 square root of b, minus 5 square roots of b, so we'd have minus 4 square root of b, then here, well, can't do anything else with that, so just bringing it along, 6 times the square root of 2b. Okay, now, they're not always going to be sitting there easy to, and ready for us to combine. Sometimes we're going to have to do a little bit of work first. Let's take a look at this one right here. We have 2 times the square root of 12 plus 6 times the square root of 3. Based on what I just said earlier, you might think, well, there's nothing I can do with that because they have, don't have the same radicals. But can I get them to be the same radical? Well, are there any perfect square factors of 12? Hmm. Let's see. Perfect square factors 4. Sure, 4 goes into 12. So let's take this and see if we can't do some simplification. So 2 times the square root of 4 times the square root of 3, and then it's going to be plus 6 times the square root of 3. Okay, then cleaning up over here, 2 times the square root of 4 is 2 times the square root of 3 plus 6 times the square root of 3. Okay, then I have 2 times 2, which is 4 square root of 3 plus 6 times the square root of 3. Oopsie, there's a 3. And, hmm, let's take a look. Hey, now we do have the same radicand, and we can combine those. We've got 4 square roots of 3 plus 6 square roots of 3 for a total of 12, or excuse me, huh, 12, 10 square roots of 3. All right, let's take a look at this one over here. We've got 200 the square root of 200 plus the square root of 75. Again, we need to look and see if we can do some simplification. So, square root of 200, perfect square factors. 100 is a perfect square. 2 times 100. So I'm going to take the square root of 2 times the square root of 100. Then over here we have 75, perfect square factors. Let's see, 25. So square root of 25 times the square root of 3. And remember, to get those, what we're doing is we are looking at that number that's in the square root, and then we can break that up to get a perfect square factor, something that we could simplify. Okay, so now let's go down here and do some simplification. Square root of 100 is 10. I jumped over there because we like to put the numbers out front of the square roots. So I have 10 square root of 2. I just flip that around. Then over here, square root of 25 is 5 times the square root of 3. Okay? Now, I look at these. Do I have a like radicand? I do not, so there's nothing more I can do. So I have to leave it right here. 10 square root of 2 plus 5 square root of 3. Okay. Adding and subtracting radical expressions. The key 
is it's going to work very similarly to when we had variables like 6x plus 2x, except now we're working with square roots. The square root has to be the same. Sometimes we might have to do a little work to get it to be the same. Like in this example, we could simplify that square root of 12, and that gets us the square root of 3 in both situations. This one we could do some simplification, but it didn't help me in terms of combining them. So if you can simplify, though, we need to make sure that we do that. Hope this video is helpful. Keep working hard on your math. You can do it.